What's up guys, Subzerak here for something really, really special. So first of all, we're VOD reviewing YBY1, one of the best players in Vietnam. And then if you look at the players on the right, the players in this lobby, you'll notice that this is one of the most stacked lobbies out there. Bintium, Jazz Latte, Les Coco, we had Canvas who we just reviewed, Piva. The, these are all players that are elite players, world-class little TFT players. And you say, okay, what, how are all these people even in a lobby together? This is because that this is a scrim for the MSI, you can see in the top right, the TOC8 MSI tournament, basically like the MSI of TFT, where they get people from all around. Dishop's going to play in this. A lot of strong NA players are going to play in this as well. I don't remember who else is playing in it. Maybe like Weijin Iverson and some other people, Setsuko perhaps, I'm not 100% sure. But it's it's the MSI of TFT, which is really, really sick. So I, I can't wait to VOD review that. But right now we can actually VOD review some scrims from YBY1's POV. Also, speaking of tournaments, the Tacticians Cup Day 1, Tacticians Cup 2 Day 1 is happening today. Man, stationary support and benefits are so good. I, I wonder which one he actually uh, ends up taking here. But housekeeping note, I will be live streaming that on Kai's stream, co-streaming it. So the link will be in the description down below if you guys want to watch us co-stream day one. It'll be super, super fun. We can watch, you know, a bunch of really strong North American players play as well. Uh, other housekeeping note before we get too far into this VOD as well. Coaching, I've done it a lot off-platform recently, but big announcement. We are back on, whoops, sorry there. We are back on Metafy for our coaching Metafy has reduced some of their fees and added a lot of functionality. So I'm really, really excited to be back on Metafy doing coaching. So if you guys want to get coaching, I'll have the link in the description down below. Look at this cool little page I made. They have so much customization allowed now. But yeah, I made this page out so uh, so you guys can get coaching through Metafy. It's the same price as before. I can even run like discount codes. So maybe I'll do some like, you know, like, ooh, during this you know month, we have discounted coaching or something like that. Perhaps we'll see. The other thing I'm really excited for on Metafy, and let me know if you guys are interested in this, is coaching like classes. So basically you guys would pay cheaper than normal session or basically we would all hop into like a big Discord call together and I would present to you guys and like talk through like a concept in TFT, talk about like the meta. The the main first one I'm thinking of doing is like a, a fundamentals overview because people have really liked that when I've done coaching sessions with them in the past on my, my fundamentals overview. A lot of people found that very helpful. So I'm thinking of doing something like that. Let me know uh, in the comments if you guys have interest in that kind of thing, but I will very likely be running a class and, and seeing how much you guys enjoy it and it's you know cheaper for you guys you don't have to pay for basically a full session and it's better for me because i get to know talk to all these people at the same time you guys can ask questions it should be really really dope so now actually getting into the game sorry two two and a half minutes of, of housekeeping i feel like one of those terrible podcasts where you turn on the podcast podcast and it's like five minutes of ads and then you get into it but i i'm just excited to talk about this stuff this is an interesting opener from yby1 we're playing bruiser plus uh the reaper synergy which is i mean these are two synergies that don't really have any inherent synergy but we hit a kha'zix too we're throwing a shojin onto kha'zix as well which is wild we have this crown guard front line and the tg onto the uh the yone which is is really really interesting uh comp wise from this spot we've made a shojin so we have to play something ap could be lilia worst case like four cost wise could be syndra i really really like playing stuff like zyra from a shojin start especially if we get a belt here ah oh. I wish we could have picked up a belt because Shoujin Nasher's Tooth is like Giga BIS for Zyra, which is a really, really sick reroll comp that I, I would love for YBO1 to play this uh, comp this game because it's it's so strong, I think, in in my opinion, in the current meta. And it's also just, it's so fun to play. You, you get all these ghostly stacks. It's ghostly Zyra and Zoe. You get all these ghostly stacks and then Zyra kills all your enemy units. And hey, we're holding on to this Shen. And we already have this ribbon. This could certainly be a ghostly Zyra game. And maybe YBY1 was always thinking of this with the fact that he held onto the ribbon, the fact that he made the Shoujin. He's taking this rod here, which can be an spark. It could be death cap. Talking about Zyra itemization, if we do end up playing this comp, just to, to get a little ahead in, in case that's what we end up in. Oh my god. Triple Bully Bear Shop. We don't have items for it. You actually, and like with a Shoujin, we can't actually play this. That's so sad. The Triple Bully Shop. Imagine we were actually playing Duelist here. This would have been so lucky, but we're not. So it's actually like, Kind of unlucky because it'll just i mean it's not going to bait yby1 he's he's not going to bait himself into buying something stupid but i mean maybe it would bait somebody else out there i mean i'm sure somebody saw this and was like triple bully bear shop we're pivoting but with uh with shojin and rod yeah i don't really want to play duelists and it, it hurts our econ a lot but yeah zara wise her bis items ooh, and then double zoe i would say that immediately makes us already want to play into this comp yeah i love it just pick up the double zoe's here i, I love this 
Shojin is fantastic because Zyra is a 75 mana unit, so it actually like fits perfectly with each auto giving 15 mana. It means that she's going to cast in five autos every time, so it's her best mana item by far. And then Nashers also tends to be really good on her just to synergize with the Shojin, get those casts off. So those are like two BIS, and then you kind of just build whatever. Static Shiv's another fantastic uh, item here, so I fully expect to see that get picked up here. And that means we can take the AP Talisman. We do end up picking up uh, the, the Zoe early, so we are just, yeah, going to itemize the Zoe instead. So it's kind of going to be like a Zoe Zyra reroll. Zoe holds a lot of the similar items to Zyra. You don't really want Nashers as much on Zoe. You want her to actually be getting kills with her spells. I really like Heal Cut onto Zoe, though this tends to be a comp that doesn't prioritize Heal Cut that highly because you're already getting Heal Cut on Zyra, and Zyra tends to be your main carry. So, like, she's always hitting the units that you really care about with the, the Heal Cut. But hey, we'll see. Could always be, like, some kind of weird Zoe reroll, but I fully expect to see a Ghostly Frontline played this game. Two healthy is the best augment by far in this comp, by the way, which is a fantastic pickup because you can fit four two costs onto this board. So yeah, I, I love that. I wouldn't be interested in, in rolling a bit here if we, if we, uh, yeah, I would certainly roll a 40 gold here just so that we can pick up some more two cost to play. He's actually going to fit the Nico onto the board. You really at this point want to be picking up, yeah, there's the Aatrox. We can fit this in onto the board and you definitely normally play Alawi on this board. He's playing a slightly different version. This is pretty cool. This is like almost a throwback to the version where you would play, I mean, I mean this version really, it's kind of like the, the Tom Kench Bard version, but you're not playing Tom Kench Bard because obviously you're not playing around those guys. I wonder if we're going to get back into another version or if we're just going to play this. I mean, it works with too healthy. Like you guys can see, there's so many two costs that you can fit on this board. The Zyra, the Riven, the Aatrox, the Nico, the Shen is also another big one. And yeah, he's just going to sell Aatrox pair here and think about playing around this version. So yeah, like I would say the traditional version is that you're playing Aatrox Alawi over the Nico plus the Soraka here. So you're dropping out of Heavenly and you're getting Arcanist plus another Ghostly units. Uh, I mean, you're you still have Arcanist. So you're losing Heavenly for basically just Ghostly and, and Ghostly is such a nice synergy. You also get to play Alawi, which is fantastic. But I mean, this this version certainly makes sense. It's it's a pretty cool little like pivot to uh, to play this slightly different version just because it's strong. You know, we've hit the, the Nico too, so we can play around this. This is just good TFT play out of YBY1. Also, He's, he's scouting here and seeing this is actually really beneficial for us that this player is opting into two cost reroll because that's going to take more two costs out of the pool that allow us to potentially hit stuff like Shen 3, maybe Riven 3. We'll, we'll see if he actually wants to go for it. Does pick up the Riven 2. We're going to hold on to the Zoe. And hey, we have four Zoes. I mean, the way it's looking, I would not be surprised if we just pushed past level 7 and played more like a Zoe reroll instead of like a Zyra reroll. We can even pick up some Zyras on 7, but yeah, I wouldn't be shocked to see him go 7. Prioritize those 3 costs more, the Alawi 3 and the Zoe 3, and then just play around those. Alawi 3, really hard to hit in this day and age, just because there's so many people playing it, her on their uh, their Warden boards. So yeah, and, and look at that, the pre-pump from Wabu 1 basically committing, saying I am going to just push levels this game. I don't really care about rolling for stuff like Zyra 3, and I love this. It's it's reroll, but it's flexible reroll. It's not saying we're, we're just going to reroll for this exact board. That's that's a very narrow way of playing TFT. It's saying, okay, I hit some extra Zoe's. I hit some extra Nikos. Uh, this isn't going to be a Zyra game. This is going to be a Zoe game. But of course, you know, like if his shop prior to that had had two Zyra's in it and he had Zyra, you know, four Zyra's in this position, he would be playing the game differently. And, and that's just good TFT at the end of the day. Also note that he doesn't end up actually holding on to that uh, extra Nico there, because he's not looking for the Nico 3. He's looking to pivot into this version of the board. This is what I was talking about, the four ghostly version of the board. He held the Nico as like a pivot point, a way to make his board stronger, but he knows four ghostly is so, so strong. He really wants to get in a Morgana. That's that's like the big hit at this point in the game over the Caitlyn to get Sage in as well. But, you know, this is also not the end of the world. Though. We do pick up the Morgana here. We move the Crown Guard over to Alawi and also make a Redemption. This leaves Rod Item open for the Zoe. I, I like this a lot. This could be, like I said, I, I like heal cut decently onto Zoe. If you're primary carrying her, you probably have to go some kind of damage item her, like a like a death cap in a spot like this. But you can see the two healthy on this board is out of control. We have four two costs that we're playing, so it's so much HP for our board. And we already have so many Zoe's, it's fantastic. I tend to love Magic Wand in these comps. Maybe there's some kind of, yeah, I was going to say, Portable Forge would be really, really sick to see him take. Maybe it's, there's some crazy Zoe set up, but yeah, Magic Wand I love. It's more AP and your units don't get that much HP, or AP, they just have a little bit from Sage and a little bit from Arcanist. And this would allow you to slam a, a Death Cap here, which I feel like is probably the best possible item you can make here. So yeah, I love Magic Wand in comps like these. YBY1 not over rolling in a spot like this. He has basically everything upgraded except for the Aatrox too. So he's just going to sit at level seven for a little while 
You notice that we're fighting another player who's playing a very similar board to ours, but they're playing more around the four cost, playing around Morgana instead of playing around these units. But that might be a little bit annoying. They might, you know, it's going to be hard to hit something like a Ribbon 3, depending on, you know, like what they're holding, what other people are holding. There's another Shen. And oftentimes you will play around Shen 3 with this comp. It's just a it's just a question of how many Shens can you find. We found this Alawi much earlier than the Shen, and we were playing around her much earlier, so we end up just item slamming onto her. Well, I mean, actually, no, we, we got them in at the same time, but we had a Lowey 2 and Shen 2, and a Lowey 2 is much better than Shen 2. The main thing is that, like, a Shen 3 is, is really, really nice. Hey, maybe we'll see the unitemized Shen 3 like we saw on Canvas's board earlier in the in the VOD review yesterday, where you just say, Shen 3, use him for his utility, but don't really care about itemizing him. I could see it. I could certainly see it. Two-star three cost is actually insane for us. Imagine if we got the Zoe... Or if we got an Alawi, but there is not an Alawi, it looks like, on this carousel, which is really rough. I mean, oh my god. Oh, so sad, so sad. Okay, I mean, it's not the end of the world, you know, it's it's, it's all right. But man, imagine if we got that Zoe, this game would have been so, so easy. The big question at this point, I guess, is are we pushing 8 or are we rolling on 7? There's not much to add to this board on 8, in my opinion, but maybe y yb ones going to prove me wrong. No, he is going to roll on this level. I love this, yeah. I, I don't think this is a comp that really spikes that hard on 8, and there's so much stuff that we want to pick up on 7 here, especially we can pick up the 2 costs as well, and that is a crazy shop, by the way, all these units. I guess you just sell the extra Aatrox here and hold on to the Zyra for Zyra 3. Uh, maybe he's just not even going to hold on to this. Oh, he, he locked there, sold the Ribbon so that he can move the TG potentially over. That's a pretty interesting idea here. So he locked, doesn't care about Riven 3 in this spot. Also, he's rolling deep to try to pick up some upgrades, not finding much. And yeah, he's going to move the TG over to the Shen. Mmm. This is actually really, really smart stuff. He knows that he's probably hitting Shen 3, but he know also knows that he doesn't really really want to move his items off of the Alawi. So the TG just moves over to the Shen, and now Shen 3 is going to actually have items. We don't have to have the zero item Shen 3 that Canvas had, which was, you know, very awkward. Boom, there is Zyra 3, probably the least consequential one to hit, but you know, you'll, you'll still take it. She's getting a little bit of AP from Sage, from Arcanist, from the You Have My Rod. So, you know, she's she's no slouch. And she can also be the secondary carry with stuff like this rod that we just picked up. Certainly want to get to an Alawi item here, but maybe, you know, it can be Gunblade plus Alawi item. And now he's just going to push eight. Okay, we've already found the Zyra here. So he, he's just going to push levels. Uh, Gargoyle, I guess. Gargoyle, Gunblade would be the, the setup that makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, it has to be, right? A little awkward that we only have the only item on our Zyra is Gunblade. Gunblade really, really wants to scale with other items because, like, you're not going to do a lot of damage with just Gunblade, but, you know, what are you going to do? You can move it over with the remover to the, the Zoe, which is what he was thinking about, but I think he's afraid that if he moves something over, his Zoe's going to be too low damage. Maybe it's... I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised he doesn't move Static Shiv. Static Shiv over to Zoe and then Gunblade. Uh, or Static Shiv or Desire and then Gunblade over to Zoe. Maybe he just thinks that Static Shiv is just a better item. I've seen a lot of people talking up this Shiv item on their main carries. Even though it's more of like a supportive item, it's it's also a very solid carry item in its own right. And, and YB1 here says, yeah, he'd rather have the Shiv onto his Zoe than the, the Gunblade, which is kind of crazy to me. But I think it just shows that the Shiv item on your carries is perfectly serviceable. You don't have to think about it as like a, a secondary item. So, I mean, we've pushed eight at this point. Like I said... There's really not too, too much to, to get in on the, the, the level up here. We ended up just playing a random set on our board for, for Warden, which is nice. You know, it's it's not the, the craziest thing in the world. He also ends up picking up the Gnar here, which is definitely what we want to get in here. And we finally find the Zoe 3, which is huge. The Gnar is fantastic because he is a two healthy unit. So we get some extra HP onto our board, still get to play that Warden. And yeah, it's just great. The other option usually in spots like this is Yorick. If you're main carrying a Shen, then you get Yorick in for Behemoth. But because our main tank is an Alawi, we just get to put in the, the Nar here. It's too healthy value, and it's also Warden, which is fantastic for us here. Looking for a Zyra item, I must think here. Archangels looks fantastic. Deathcap looks fantastic. If we can't get either, we'll just cry. Looks like we maybe can get this death cap. Oh, we might have to. Okay, no, no, we do get the death cap. Okay, that's good. Because if we had to take a Bramble Vest here and throw it onto, I don't know, our Aatrox, we'd be pretty unhappy. The difference here is pretty huge. The, the big question, I guess, at this point is, are we just pushing nine in this? It's it's certainly seeming difficult for us to find a Lowey 3. Like I talked about earlier in the spot, this unit is so contested that it's almost impossible to ever find her three star. This is a pretty interesting swap. We swaps his entire front line to the left. This means that Lee Sin is going to wrap against him. I'm kind of surprised about this. I mean, I guess the idea would be if he was the correct side, Lee Sin wouldn't wrap, but this positioning looks pretty bad. We still end up winning, but... 
if there was a way to lose this fight, that would be the way to do it by letting Lee Sin intentionally wrap into your backline. I think his idea was if he gets his positioning correct, then Lee Sin can never wrap, but very interesting idea for my Buhai one. In any case, we eliminate a player. We are guaranteed top four at this point, basically. The only way we could not top four is if we sold our entire board and then maybe even then Jazz Latte would still die. But we are not playing for a top four. We're playing for a first because our name is YBUI1. We are trying to do our best every time we play TFT. We're always playing for first. This guy's just a monster. So yeah, I mean, at this point, looks like we're looking at just the level nine. Like I said, the Alawi three, just probably not happening. He does pick up the Yorks here, which could be a very fitting level nine. You get in another two healthy unit. You get in Behemoth for your Shen. Doesn't end up being Shen three, but he's still Behemoth. And, and I mean, that's certainly something. And the HP is is not bad at all. Last hour item here has got to be Nastra's Tooth, I would think. I, I guess there's blue buff as well. I mean, blue buff. This doesn't really work out with... Ooh, I love this, actually. Move the Shoujin over to Zyra, I guess, and then you blue buff the Zoe. Yeah, I love this. Like I was talking about, Shoujin's so much better on Zyra than something like a blue buff. And, uh, and... Oh, wait. Wait, what happened to our blue buff? What? Oh, he took redemption. <laughs> wait, what? He, let me go back. I, th I, th I thought he, he actually just baited me. Did he... Oh, he took the Nashers at the last second. I really thought he went for the blue buff. Okay, so he takes the Nashers here. <laughs> I was like, oh, the blue buff, such a cool idea. Moves the Shoujin over, and the Nashers becomes our mana item. Okay, that probably is a better mana item on Zoe, I guess. He already has a decent, well, a little bit of attack speed from Shiv. I wonder, I, I mean, I guess Nashers is a better mana item on Zoe than, than blue buff. I would have thought that maybe it was blue buff, but I, Zoe's a decently high mana cost, so it, it probably is Nashers. And hey, we win that fight. It's just a top two for us now. And he did get the Yorick in on level up, by the way, just to juice up the board a little bit more HP for our entire board. This is one, two, three, four. This is five two costs we're playing on this board, right? Which is an insane amount of health with two healthy. This is basically like a prismatic bulk on our entire board that we're getting from just a gold augment, which is pretty insane when you think about the fact that Prismatic Bulk doesn't even bulk your entire team. This is a really close fight. Can Zyra clutch it out? She can, actually. The only thing to worry about, though, is this guy's level 9 40 HP, so we really, really need to just close out, or level 9 40 gold. We really need to close out this fight as quickly as possible because if this guy gets to 10, if this guy gets to roll, then this fight becomes a lot harder. Their board looks so strong, by the way. It just shows the power of this Zyra Zoe reroll board. The fact that this fight is like even close, the, the fact that we can even win is, is pretty, pretty insane. It's just a testament to the strength of these units. Ah, that was such a close fight. We ended up getting AoE down at the last second there. The other scary thing is they have so many units to itemize. We don't really have anyone to itemize here. Yeah, why would I one just struggling to even find an item? He's gonna have to Quinsu his Morgana, which is certainly not what you want to be doing. But yeah, it's so hard. This guy just goes 10. Ugh. I mean, we'll see, but you see him, you see him slump back in his chair there. He, he knows that this might actually be the end for us because this guy going 10 is just it's so so difficult to to win through at this point it's interesting that he's still clumped up here the only thing that's really scary clump wise is that azir ult and the set ult i guess it ends up being fine here because kale dies first and yeah it, it looks like it's just gonna be too hard to win this fight we would have to like super super cheese somehow picks up nautilus too which he is gonna put in over the nar at this point he just says if i can find a nautilus too oh he's actually yeah he's gonna play the nautilus too and then he's just gonna play the the nar too as well he says behemoth is really not that important here nar too might do something and he yeah, he's throwing his entire board front line. He's, he changed his weird positioning. Now he's just putting everything up there. He really just doesn't want his main tanks to get setted here, which is why he's putting them in this kind of interesting spot. The set ult does get interrupted. Maybe, maybe there's a world where this is enough. Zoe's getting cast off. Zyra's getting cast off. It's so close, actually. One more Zyra cast. Oh my god. He gets them down to 4 HP. Beautiful positioning for YBY1 to actually bring that fight back. That was crazy. The fact that this fight is actually winnable with, with the other guy being level 10. And we don't even have a Lowey 3, we don't even have Shen 3, but he's just playing through it. Ugh, this is just, just goes to show how good of a, of a player YB1 is. He's always trying to play for that win out. Even in a spot like this that looks doomed, he's going for it. Picks up the Morgana too. Have to imagine we take either Morgana item or Nautilus item here. I guess Guardbreaker Morgana. He's going to go with a Hodge Morgana actually to keep her alive longer. I kind of love it. Moves the Morgana over to the left side. We are very, very clumped here. But his hope, I guess, is that Morgana can apply Ghosts on the same side and that we can just burst through this front line. Ooh, this fight looks a lot worse than the last one, though. And it is stage seven. Oh, my God. This game is so long, actually. We're going to 7-2 here, and this is going to be the last fight. There is no way we are doing one more fight here. Let's see what we can do here. That uh, person just got a, a pretty scary upgrade, I think. 
We, we don't want to get our back line setted. That's been a big issue. We also don't want to get our front line setted. We do swap. Is set? Oh, set is going to go onto the Alawi. This is really, really rough for us. I mean, that last fight was so hard because set just dunked him into our back line. Our, our Alawi does live here, though. We're going to get a Zoe cast, a Zyra cast. Oh, my God. He actually still wins that fight through the set alt. What a beautiful game positioning wise at the end for YB by one. Just making the swaps, playing for his strongest board, playing for, you know, max cap, moving the items around, playing for the win. That was such a cool game from YB by one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do, please like, comment, subscribe. Once again, go check out my Metify and the link down below. Sorry, that's me. And also go check out the link to the co stream that uh, should be live right now. All right, I'll see you guys there. Bye.